So Stephen, we know that it's important to have updated, clean resume when applying for a job. So what do you think people should include in their resume? Absolutely. Great question. So there's four things that every resume should have. Number one is who you are, right? So introducing yourself with a little bit of a summary that sets people up to know why you're the right fit for the job that you're applying for. Mm -hmm. Number two is what do you do? Right. So let people know what type of role that you're applying for. So as a designer, are you an architect? Are you a researcher? Like, what do you do and kind of what's in your toolbox that you're capable of delivering? Mm -hmm. The third thing is going to be how you do it. And this is where you get into every job or everything you have listed in your resume. You should provide descriptions that talk about how you were able to add value and how that could be transferable to the role that you want next. A kind of an accomplishment statement. Yeah, absolutely. So it's that star method of like situations, tasks, actions, and results Mm -hmm. that speaks to how you added value in that role and why those skills are transferable to the role that you're hopefully getting next. Okay. And then the fourth thing that you should have on your resume, which is usually at the top of the resume, is that contact information. Mm -hmm. So people want to know more about you. They want to engage with you more. It's going to be things like your phone number, your location, like geography, your email address. And then as or as designers specifically, having your portfolio URL at the top Mm. gives access to more. Yeah. So some people are like, oh, should I do my LinkedIn? Should I do anything? As a designer, we should have our portfolio at the top of our resume and the contact information because it gives us from your resume to your portfolio, the depth of information that's available to the value that you can provide. So in terms of styling, is there any difference between a designer resume and let's say, an administrative resume. Yeah, there are definitely different points of view from my angle, which has been tested through designers that I work with regularly and as well as people who might hire me who aren't designers. Mm -hmm. I always use the same general resume structure. So I personally disagree with the very fancy resume with fancy fonts, with fancy colors, with fancy icons, Mm -hmm. because that distracts people from what a resume is supposed to do. Yeah. which is learn and crave more about you. Yeah, and op- an opportunity for an interview. That's the purpose of a rest. Yes. Yeah, so if you make it difficult for the user to try to understand and read, mm-hmm. they're going to move on because you're making them work harder than they necessarily need to. Yeah. So well, that- personally, I don't think a design resume or a pretty resume with colors and graphics mm-hmm. adds value when your target audience is somebody who you want to interview you and not yeah. to see how pretty your designs are. That's for your portfolio and for later presentations. Those are great tips, Stephen. Thank you very much. Again, for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips in terms of resume, leave them below and tune in next time for another great question with Stephen.